four distinguished speakers that we have today. Uh, they will share with us, you know, their experiences and journey. Um, I think without further ado, I will uh, like to invite uh, the first speaker, Professor Shabas Khan. Uh, and as SE's previous introduction, he is the director of UNESCO, uh, Regional Science Bureau for Asia and the Pacific, uh, representative to Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Timor Leste. Uh, he's an engineer by training. So without further ado, uh, Professor Shabas Khan, may I invite you to share your presentation, please? Thank you very much, John. And thank you for an excellent introduction to the topic and also for Sengshuan to invite me. And uh, it is an honor to be with the uh, fellow speakers who are so eminent in their fields. I will share with you some slides to put this into perspective of Asia Pacific, especially for the sustainable development goals and uh, the situation we are in and how can we have a build back uh, better um, uh, possibility and what can we do together so i share some slides with you and hopefully this should provide a basis for some questions for us to collectively answer so i will be focusing on multidisciplinary approaches uh, towards sustainability but let's first look into the top trends in asia so we have uh, the global connectivity as a major uh, trend. And uh, also very importantly, we have uh, uh, this uh, pandemic has brought to, to focus that uh, we are connected, whether it's climate change or whether it's pandemics or whether solving any of the economic issues, the world has to work together. And especially in Asia Pacific uh, region, balancing growth with sustainability remains a very big uh, challenge. Uh, and of course, the fourth industrial revolution, the rise of Asia um, in terms of not only the economics, but the political and many other aspects. But also very importantly, uh, there is a lack of progress on environmental sustainable development goals, which I will introduce to you in a moment. Also, very importantly, we are subject to one of uh, the biggest sources of pollution, the plastic pollution due to rapid urbanization. So we are focusing on urban today and out of the top 10 mega cities, eight of them are in the Asia Pacific. And my colleagues will uh, show you in their presentations that there are many more mega cities in Asia. And of course, we constitute more than 60% of world's population. So this is really an important topic, uh, the uh, sustainability of uh, urban areas and how can we go through this pandemic and build back better. The reality of issues is, first of all, the fossil fuels are still on the increase. So while, of course, uh, during this pandemic, there is not as much air traffic, but overall, the reliance on fossil fuels uh, for years is continuing. Greenhouse emissions still being released now and into the future. Consumption of plastic is increasing. Uh, air pollution is still increasing. I will show you some interesting statistics biodiversity loss is happening. Pandemics are not only for once, they are happening again and again. And we have uh, right now COVID-19, but in the world and in this region, we have seen many others as well. And also there is a challenge. How do we solve these problems? How do we bring science, education, our culture, uh, public-private partnerships? And of course, as uh, John has introduced, this concept of environmental social governance, uh, ESG, how we can put it into practice to solve the present problems and be more sustainable into future. Uh, I uh, put a quote from our uh, United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, uh, a time to save, seek and rescue the planet. So that's what we are precisely in. And we need to also uh, carefully look into sustainability issues. Let me begin with uh, by saying we are dealing with interconnected uh, challenges in our cities. Water, energy, food security, you cannot separate one issue at a time. You have to work together, look into those issues together. Fossil fuels and air quality, climate change and renewable energy, climate change and pollution, climate change and food security, climate change and natural disasters, the impacts of floods, volcanic eruptions, greenhouse gas emissions, all of them are interconnected. And very importantly, how climate change is, has been impacting on our 
cities uh, from uh, energy from water from food from uh, greenhouse emissions the air quality so we have to carefully look into how all of this is connected and of course the cities are connected with the greater ecosystems with the oceans with our uh, uh, the over the land and below the water systems that's where united nations has this uh, very ambitious uh, 2030 agenda for sustainable development and that's where urban communities are very important because they are uh, the bigger part of the population in many parts of the world we have these 17 sustainable development goals and the governments have committed uh, to implement them but we cannot achieve any of the sustainable development goals unless there is a clear leadership by the communities by the businesses by the academia so every one of us have to play a role for today i will be introducing some of the sustainable development goals in the context of the cities but for cities all these goals are important from no poverty to zero hunger to uh, global health to quality of education gender water clean energy decent work um, having the industry which is uh, innovative reducing inequalities and of course sustainable cities and communities and responsible consumption and production climate change life below water life on land and peace justice and strong institutions and uh, uh, very strong international partnerships and today's forum i believe is also part of that so very quickly let's look into uh, some of them so that we can get the message across how important they are the sdg number uh, 11 making cities and human settlements inclusive safe resilient and sustainable so inclusive means we are not going to leave anyone behind we are not going to discriminate against anyone uh, safe means also safe from disasters and safe from uh, the point of view of citizens should be able to go anywhere they like resilient if a shock comes they should be able to come back and they should be sustainable sdg number 12 about responsible consumption and production if we are producing uh, the goods and services which are through green and clean technologies and then we are consuming in a responsible way by reducing reusing and recycling only then we can really uh, change the dynamics of our cities and then of course the climate change the sdg number 13 and how can we improve uh carbon sequestration how can we do reforestation how can we rehabilitate uh, soil organic uh, carbon and these are linked with our cities and their catchments let's look into how much progress we have made this is from the sdg gateway asia pacific is on the united nation escap uh, uh, the commission for, uh, for asia and pacific uh, you can uh, look into the original data as well So on the left hand side here I would like to show you these 17 sustainable development goals and this is the progress up to 2019 and uh, if we look into um, where we are so none of these goals up to 2019 we were very close except maybe for quality education and then of course we have now uh, the pandemic uh, covid-19 hitting us so goals have been slowed down but also very importantly some of the goals have been really lagging behind like uh, for example goal number 11 which we are very much uh, looking into for today's discussion sustainable cities and communities and of course the responsible consumption and production and climate change so these three very important goals you can see the progress is not where it is in fact they are lagging behind even uh, from the year 2000 uh, before so if you look into goal number 11 what is in goal number 11 and these are part of uh, what we say those uh, targets so uh, 11.1 is about open defecation practices in urban areas so certainly this has uh, been achieved in most of the countries especially in urban areas but it's not the same in the rural areas uh, road traffic uh, deaths and road traffic congestion certainly lagging behind deaths missing affected people from disasters still a long way to go economic losses and affected infrastructure and services from disasters still very big problem and of course the air quality the particulate matter 2.5 i will show you some examples from individual countries as well if we look into this one uh, um, indicator urban particulate matter 11.6.2 you can see for countries from afghanistan all the way to uh, vietnam in asia pacific and for the world 
the WHO safe limit is that uh, uh, urban particular matter should be less than um, 10 microgram per meter cube. And this is that limit here. But if you look into uh, some of the countries, they are way out of uh, the balance. Of course, there are countries like Australia, there are countries like uh, Brunei, um, and uh, you can see Singapore uh, is a bit off as well. So there are challenges. Um, but also uh, for countries, for example, like Afghanistan, if you look into the numbers, they are very, very big. So we have serious issue with the air quality and air quality is one of the biggest killers around if uh, we want to put it into proper context. And of course, if the air quality is bad, it means the, uh, the, the processes for uh, production and consumption are not uh, proper. The environment is not being looked into uh, carefully. This is a very important indicator. So we have a serious challenge for sustainability. Let's look into some of uh, the countries. Now, uh, we start first with Indonesia, where I am today. A population of over 260 million, more than 17,000 islands. So starting with 11.1.1, an indicator about urban slum population is still a challenge. And you can see um, up to 2014, uh, the population in slums is going down, then going up again. We do not have the most recent data, but imagine if 30% of the population is still living in slums, there is a serious challenge for the quality of life. Also disasters, the deaths, the people affected, the uh, total losses in terms of millions of dollars, huge. And this is a recurring phenomena. And again, going back to particulate matter 2.5, it is certainly much above um, for the overall for the urban areas uh, very high as well as for the rural area. So we have challenges of sustainability in big nations such as Indonesia. Here is an example from Malaysia, another very important country, a developed country. And there we have the challenge again with the air quality. We have challenge again with the deaths and missing persons attributable to disasters, population affected by disasters, which can be quite high and the economic losses due to disasters. So we have to continue to think about disasters, about air quality, about water quality, about environmental quality, about human health. Again, another very big country, Pakistan, more than 220 million people. And if you look into the percentage of people living in urban slum areas, while it is going down, still it is more than 40%. And of course, the air quality is completely out of uh, uh, the balance from the point of view of uh, WHO maximum safety limits. And of course, disaster is very huge. And the number of population in, uh, in terms of millions of people being affected, like this is uh, 2010, when there were major floods and more than 4 million people here affected. Also, we have economic losses, which are running into billions of dollars year after year. Then I give you example of a least developed country, which is the more less 1.3 million people. And here, of course, the first problem is we do not have as much data. Data is only a point here. And if you look into the percentage of the population in slum areas is around 35%. And that's still very big for a small country. And then of course, a small country, still the air pollution is uh, quite big, maybe not as many cars, but still there are some other practices uh, which we need to carefully look into. Also disasters remain a big challenge. So that gives you the picture that we are lagging behind on the SDGs. We have serious issues with the quality of air. We have serious issues with disasters and we have still the problem of people living in the urban slum areas. So question is who are being left behind? And my answer to that is they are all over in Asia Pacific. They come from different ethnic cultural backgrounds, but they're very important citizens of Asia and Pacific. And we need to work with them as academia, as United Nations system, as businesses with the local communities to solve these issues. And that brings you uh, to this risk governance and social resilience concept. So the first very important principle is leave no one behind. So making sure we uh, look after all those communities. Then also planning and implementation should have a participatory multi approach, which should have multi stakeholders, multidisciplinary, and it should look into multi hazards. So for example, COVID along with tsunamis, along with the floods, along with droughts, along with climate change and all of that. And we need to bring communities, society, technology, globalization, and all of those complex issues together. 
and that really means a new kind of uh, partnerships which have never been there before so we need to get rid of our present pandemic situation but we need to build back better through a multidisciplinary multi stakeholder multi hazard approach so that's where we have to work very carefully together and uh, this forum is also very important while we may be directly looking into sustainable cities and partnerships and climate change at the same time continue to improve quality of education improving quality of water security of water um, bringing also the focus on decent jobs uh, which should be through green growth and at the same time looking into industry innovation and infrastructure so it is not possible for one part of our society it's not the governments only we also need uh, the private sector we need the communities and we need the academia and uh, uh, all parts of society including the young people and uh, certainly making sure we do not leave behind women in unesco i give you one example where we have brought together uh, young uh, professionals youth science engineering technology innovation people and uh, of course with senchuan we have been working in the federation of engineering associations here is the example where we bring disaster risk reduction experts from many countries so these kind of chapters are now already working they are uh, looking carefully into science communication into policy into transboundary issues issues related to cities climate change as well as they are looking into how they can form these partnerships for accreditation of disaster risk reduction into urban areas and into wi wider landscapes uh while we have the covid situation we can be stuck with the tsunami as well so in unesco we are working on tsunami ready communities and under this particular program now with the uh, intergovernmental oceanographic uh, commission ioc of unesco we have come up with 12 indicators for a community to be tsunami ready still the progress in asia pacific is not as good as it can be india is on board and uh, some of the pacific islands but we need to continue to work even harder to have this multi hazard approach then coming back to the partnership between academia united nations system and the community we have to work together to bring sustainability science the science which brings uh, uh, the uh, how the processes work uh, the knowledge of the information technology the knowledge of uh, environment along with how society how ethics social norms um, and how can we bring forward all parts of society through an inclusive approach so from sustainability science to sustainability from the point of view of defining a sustainable society and uh, integrating the work of individuals all the way to the whole of society and that's where we have quite a lot of examples and of course uh, uh, cities like for example singapore uh, there has to be a greater uh, landscape ecological approach and that applies to all mega cities in fact where we need to look into the whole of the systems and uh, bringing communities ecosystems wetlands grasslands and looking into how the cities can be sustainable into future green communities for green cities looking into nature based solutions looking into issues of how can we reduce floods how can we have better water management how can we have more um, natural and constructed wetlands uh, reforestation uh, how can there be better um, riparian buffers and the green spaces within cities the dry toilets and all of that so there is a whole gamut of uh, tools available but unfortunately these tools are not applied then also schools have to become green schools and here i wish to give you an example of green schools we are promoting in unesco we have um, already excellent examples in kalimantan in delhi in uh, um, in timor leste in central asia and these green schools can be the way forward i'm very pleased to report to you the science uh, center in uh, singapore is promoting some of these very excellent ideas with the young people as well also the cities have to be redesigned and rethought by, for improving water and food security and we need to have better uh, design of our buildings and green buildings and that's where the engineering community has to come forward to come up with the new benchmarks and new technical standards which promote uh, engineering solutions along with nature based solutions 
And of course, we need to look into co-benefits of being sustainable from social, economic, and environmental. And social should include human health. There is this one health concept, which is the human health, environmental health, and animal health together. And also at the same time, looking into the economic benefits, which should go towards sustainable economic growth, decent jobs, and at the same time, environment, which is not only restoration, but it's maintenance and everything to be biodiversity positive. And also very importantly, we need to connect different parts of our society, different parts of our catchments and cycles, like here in case of a, um, a water cycle, how do we connect the upstream downstream communities? Can the communities uh, which are into these high rise buildings and but enjoying the benefits of clean water, clean air and better environment, pay for ecosystem services and that can create new way for managing our environment into future. Also very importantly, the missing and invisible link is the governance. People and environment positive uh, investments which promote good governance as part of uh, sustainability and we bring human rights approaches. And human rights are, for example, right to education, right to a decent job, uh, right to clean air, right to um, clean water and uh, uh, safe sanitation, So and also safety from disasters. So I wish to also uh, bring to your notice this very important example from uh, our Creative Cities Network. These are uh, the cities from around the world which are bringing many important aspects on crafts and folk art, on design, on film, on gastronomy, on literature, on media, on music. There are seven categories, in fact. There are 66 cities in Asia and the Pacific. And of course, very importantly, Singapore is a UNESCO creative city of design. And that's where we also have, for example, Bandung is the city of design as well. And I am very passionate about this uh, aspect that we should have academia industry alliance and that's where the work which singapore and engineers are doing with the universities there and uh, the engineers and uh, uh, the practitioners working together with the university uh, sector very importantly on the sdgs also looking into pandemics climate biodiversity pollution tackling these issues can help us bring a better um, alliance between the academia and the industry then um, uh, now coming to my uh, concluding part that while we are in this pandemic and we start thinking about uh, building back better from the examples I gave you, we need to think about payment for ecosystem services. We need to bring one health. We need to bring different modalities for finance. And very importantly, the national governments should look into self-benefiting and South-South cooperation for green investments. ODA has been very important in this region and we need to think about climate positive ODA and innovative financing, including Islamic finance, for example, of FICA and Zakat. And CSR has to go a long way towards the zero plastic and clean oceans. With that, I thank you for uh, listening and uh, you are welcome to follow me on Facebook or on Twitter or link me on the LinkedIn. As a closing statement, uh, Post-COVID urban sustainability will not be achieved through business as usual as we are doing now or what ha has been tried before. We need community-based multidisciplinary green solutions to help build back better. And we were already lagging behind on SDGs. And if we have to build back better, we need a lot more energy and a lot more partnerships, as I said, between academia, industry, um, and very importantly, the professional bodies, United Nations system, and going back to the basics of linking closely with the communities we serve. So with that, I thank you and hand it back to John. Thank you, John.